What's going on guys and welcome to Mikey Balls Fishing. As you can see I'm all sunblocked up. I highly recommend you wear sunblock all the time. You'd be surprised how much, like how burned you actually get. Even when it's not that warm out. Obviously it's still pretty warm down here. We're down in Florida. But wear sunblock. It's good. And use the zinc stuff. That's my little like, like mommy moment. <laughs> use sunblock. Yeah. Or don't like whatever so check this out we are on beautiful this is Lake June um, we're in the Sebring area this is one of my favorite places to fish around here in Florida and, it, and it's great all the way like summer through fall because it's hot out the fish need some deep water to kind of like hide out plus Mike wants to go swimming and stuff dude like and swimming in like Istapoga and Okeechobee not happening so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go out and I haven't been here in in quite a while and this lake is renowned for having brush piles like offshore structure and I probably have like I don't know I'd say like 200 some waypoints out here um, but a lot of problems that you run into with trees and like structure like that that's put out it is it degrades over time it breaks down so you gotta always be finding new stuff and re-upping so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through kind of a cool process if you're at all interested in offshore structure fishing we're gonna go through and find some of that stuff. We're gonna fish it, and I'm gonna tell you what I think's going on with it, why the fish are there, and it can hold some giants, dude. Like, that's the one awesome part about offshore fishing, especially with like single, I don't know, like structured targets. Um, big bass tend to use them because big bass tend to be kind of like loners. You know, the schools are fun. You catch like a seven pounder, eight pounder, it's awesome. But some Mondos use brush piles, Mondos. So it should be fun. Come along with me though. Let's get this rig in the water. Make sure to that, that, that like and subscribe button. I really appreciate all your support for the videos and I hope you take stuff away from them. I hope they teach you something or you can learn something from them because I'm always learning stuff from you guys and I really appreciate all the insights you throw me. So let's take a look at what an active or excited, I guess you could say, brush ball looks like. Something where I think I'm gonna catch a fish. And we're gonna take a look. You can see the line of them right there on the C map. So what does it look like on the graph? And it's gonna be real obvious why it's active when we go over it. So take a look right here. So you see all the brim and all the, the bait. It like drifts off on the side scan. That here's just the brush pile is actually that that stalk right there but all the brim all the bait what that means I'm gonna turn this motor off real quick so you can hear me but basically what that means is like it's on like you'll drive over a bunch of brush piles that you'll see like you'll literally see the branches and like the sticks and stuff and it's empty it's it's the most beautiful picture you've ever seen on your graph because it looks like this awesome landscape picture <laughs> like these arms coming off the trees but there's nothing on them those are dead brush piles when you start seeing a bunch of bait in this case on this lake it's gonna be a lot of brim there aren't as many shad here but a whole bunch of brim a whole bunch basically it's as simple as this if you see a bunch of dots whether they're big white dots like bass or little like fuzzy dots like they're like brim or forage that's good like that's an active pile and you'll be amazed if you do this a few times over You'll go over the same thing, say, one week, and it's empty. You go over the same thing two weeks later, and it looks like a cloud, dude. Like, it's just, it's insane. And that's what happens. They, they move back and forth. They change. Different things turn on. Different depths turn on, too. That's another trick I'm going to throw you real quick. So one thing I do to kind of identify where I should focus, because obviously I can't cover this whole lake in one day. Like, I'm not 40 people, you know, so no hashtag pro, bro. <laughs> But basically what I'll do is I'll scan some brush piles that I have. I'll scan them in 25 feet, scan them in 20, scan them in 16, scan them in 12. And what did I see? Where was the most active bait? Where did I see bait the most? Where did I see a few bass? And then you can kind of isolate that. It's not always going to work, but it'll give you kind of the first steps on a pattern so you have an idea and a starting point to kind of move forward with. Whoa, he ate it. 
and oh my gosh dude he ate it and just ran that's a giant oh i hope i got a good hook in him oh god oh my gosh come here come here come here, come here. <laughs> she's a jumper boy <laughs> oh my gosh dude and that's why you throw a magnum wacky jig look at that bass and look what she did to my magnum wacky jig oh girl my homies i gotta get this dish released it's hot out i don't want to keep her in the well but dude yeah dude look at that i mean look at the stripe dude see the back stripes fish is beautiful can't even fit her in the camera all right it's probably six and a half, seven. Go to your home. Dude, that fish. So I got this jig and I think, I don't watch much YouTube, but I think Tactical Bass and throw something like it. And it's it's a wacky jig. And I've been throwing it for years. It's, God, if you go back like six or seven years, there's a video on YouTube that I made about it. But basically it's, it's kind of a cool setup and I'll probably get some hate for this. But unlike, I think Tactical Bass and uses a, a big Senko and I would advise against that I personally think that's like the worst bait you can use but that's just my opinion hate down in the comments box okay so what I do is I have a custom jig that I you know skirted up basically that's black green pumpkin and then a, a magic craw some of my favorite colors but the trick is, is I put um, a gambler O beast on there and I know you guys are like oh you always throw again I like gambler stuff yeah there's no doubt but there's a reason for that so when you're fishing like these brush piles there's big brim down there especially you know we're in florida there's big bass big brim big bait and this thing is mondo but it's also kind of compact and you can see just by me holding it do you see how it like it bounces a whole bunch so this is like super dense plastic it's a lot more dense than your standard like senko style bait and i really believe that that quivers more plus it adds a lot of weight to the jig to go down and that's why I prefer it against like, say even like a fat ace, like a stick bait style bait. Um, this guy during the summer is the deal. Now during the winter, I'll use like a little Dominky Stinger or something a little more compact. But dude, during the summer on these brush piles, cause the other thing this thing does is I'll get it on that brush pile, get it all hung and I'll pop it off. So it's like maybe five, six foot off the bottom and it flutters down and this thing just goes and that's the sound it makes as it goes down. It just wags, it wags at him. It's like, come and eat me, come and eat me. That was dumb. I'm gonna cast the catch. <laughs> Can you say bass? And they're all on a bar. Oh dear. There she is. I think that's a big. Uh huh. Oh dear. Did she just come out with? I don't know if she was following it or what, but. Like lifted it and it was just walk the other way. Oh dear, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Oh dear, oh god, my drag's locked up. <laughs> oh, hashtag dutical. <laughs> You're not gonna get away, buddy boy. <laughs> I'm not gonna get away from me. Oh, or maybe you will. Oh dear. Yes, you don't like me. Dude, that's another like five pounder. Look how fat they are. We'll get her right back though. <sighs> See ya. So let me show you real quick how you rig up this wacky jig. It's super duper simple. So first things first, this is a boss head. It's a stand-up head. You can see it's got that flat side. This is a half ounce. I use a half ounce. There's not that much current out here unless there's wind. Um, I use a half ounce down to say 20, 23 feet. If there's current, you're gonna have to go to a three quarter at about 20 feet or so, cause you're just, you're not gonna keep bottom contact. And the other thing, the jig's not gonna get down to where you're casting to. For instance, if you cast out, the current's gonna sweep it back so much that you're gonna miss what you're actually aiming at and then this skirt is a custom skirt that I made it's pumpkin green pumpkin and then um, magic craw there's a hair of black in there um, I like it it looks like brim I think it's cool I don't know if it's magical but 
it, it, make, it gives me confidence. Um, and I'm actually trying out, these are the Boss Rings for skirts. They're a little better than those bands. You guys actually told me when I did my custom skirt video that the bands that come with that kit, I'll put links to all this below, but the Skirts Unlimited kit kind of suck, and they do suck. Only problem with these guys, though, is they don't work as well on my skirt stretcher. But they, they hold the skirt better, and you can see it flares it out like that's the way a jig should look that's pretty bad looking so like i said i got an obese this is green pumpkin and here's what you're going to do you're going to find there's a little hook guide indentation find the back of it the reason you know it's the back is it comes to a point right there and i'm just going to take my my jig and aim for the back of that thing and just slide it all the way through and like i said it, it's super simple you see how it kind of like balances on there you get that wacky jig presentation nice and jittery um, equipment wise 15 pound fluorocarbon I don't unless you got crazy brush piles and dirty water I don't like going any heavier than 15 because if there's current 15 works it's enough to drag a big fish out we've caught some bigs um, the other thing is too high speed reel um, this is an old Shimano that I got so 721 or an 821 if you want and then I like doing it on a seven foot medium heavy just a traditional rod two reasons one it's long enough to make a decent cast it's stiff enough to handle a big fish two i don't like using a longer rod because sometimes what i'll do is i'll actually hang this thing on a brush pile and i rip it out and i found with the longer rods because they have a little a little more taper i guess to the to the like to the tip right here they don't flick the jig out as well they tend to actually hang the brush pile versus rip the rip the jig out of the brush pile so i like a little more standard rod seven foot medium heavy halo ti use a little higher end rod so you have that better sensitivity but um try some of this it's, it's fun Fish. oh dear that's a big one Oh gosh, dude, I found a bar and there's some giants on it. Just giants, like this one. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Oh my God, I got him on a little baby net. Oh God, oh God. Oh, she's wrapped around the line. Got you. Look how fat that joker is. Oh dear. Dude, and just like she would have come off. Oh my god, look at that. and there's so many more. Oh my god. So the beauty of idling around and like just looking is you accidentally find shell bars and schools of fish as well. And that's what I think I just found. Look at this girl. Dude, look how tall. That thing's gotta be like eight and a half inches tall. Like, dude, and 90% angry. <laughs> I love this fishing down here. It is so stupid, dude. Like, it is so much fun. If I didn't know you better, I think that was a torpedo. Hello, active brush pile. You see all the brim? There's a bass. See the bass on the edge of it? You can see him coming up right there. But that is an active brush pile. That's exactly what we're looking for. So there's two ways I like to line up behind a brush pile. So you can see the brush pile, it's right there. We're behind it, and I'm gonna cast towards it. So the word on the angle, up there. And um, basically what I do is I try to get either behind the wind or in front of the wind. Now granted, there's gonna be times when you're gonna have to hit it at different angles and play around with the wind but in general in order to take advantage of my spot lock on my ghost lawrence or my lawrence ghost uh, trauma motor i gotta either be behind it or in front of it so i can keep a good line that's my point one so i can keep a good line and know exactly what i'm throwing at not hell maybe yeah that's big High for a well, God, it's hard to tell. At one minute, they're not big. Another minute, they're gigantic. Oh my golly. Dude, this is on the wacky jig. I can't even do nothing with this joker. Oh God, here she comes again. Oh golly. This is not. Dude, I mean, knocked it like like a 12-inch bass. 
come back up. There's got to be like 20 of them down there. I don't know if they're all this big, but oh, they are big. Come here, come here, come here. Gosh, I can't even do nothing. Oh my God. Perfectly hooked. I think I got them lined up. Yeah, she wasn't coming off. <laughs> Look at that. Get oriented. There you go. Oh, now you're angry. Those are big bass right there. Let's see it on the side scan. There she is. Yeah. That's a big on the old wax. Lay down. How big? I do not know. Oh my god. So big. So big. Oh, don't come off. Do not come off. Guys, it, this is kind of like a last stop we were making. And I came back and refished some stuff. God, that's a big one. Oh, God. Oh, no. She's going to come off. I knew it. I saw the jig on the corner of her mouth. God bless it all. It was like an eight pounder, dude. That would have put us like 34 freaking pounds. <sighs> Unbelievable, dude. I freaking knew I turned her wrong. It was stupid. Can you say epic day? <laughs> that was, we were damn close to 30. Damn close, dude. I don't put the, now go ahead, trolls, haters, whatever. Put, throw your comments down in the comments box. I don't put these jokers on a scale during the summer and even during the winter, unless they're gigantic. Like, I'm not gonna dangle them from a scale and watch them suffocate and like call me a ninny. I don't care. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm gonna throw them in the well for two seconds and release them. You do what you want, I'm gonna do what I want. But basically, I tried to show you guys how to kind of find some offshore structure, whether it's brush piles, whether it's uh, man-made structure, a lot of like DNR, like Department of Natural Resources or Florida Wildlife Commission, a lot of your local environmental protection kind of state groups, they'll actually put out artificial structures and stuff like that. Same idea. Um, they'll mark there sometimes, which is kind of nice, but you can scan them, identify whether they're active, and then fish them, dude. And the only trick that, that kind of annoys me and it's why I do kind of prefer to like fish shell bars is it limits your baits a little bit because these are craggly kind of like grabby arm structures, whether it's trees, whether it's pipe structures, like you got to fish somewhat weedless stuff or you have to fish your bait next to the brush pile. Oftentimes when I'm using like a, a 10XD or a 6XD or a big spoon, I'm going to fish those next to the brush pile. That means you have to be very detail oriented, either use a buoy or use your point one, otherwise you're going to hang a lot of crankbaits. Same thing goes for that swim bait, but a little bit different. I'll fish the swim bait over the brush pile, or I'll fish that, that scrounger head over the brush pile. It's your basic ledge fishing baits, you know, Nichols Meg Spoon, Big Swim Bait, Scrounger, 6XD. Like those, those are kind of your active fish baits, but what was really the highlight today, and I don't even have a bait on it because I, I just lost a fish on it again, um, it's the Wacky Jig. Uh, grab yourself an O-Beast. Um, I also use a Domeki Stinger, but a half ounce to a three quarter ounce jig. If you're fishing shallower, go down to a three ace, but give that a try. It's a cool presentation. They don't see it much. You're not going to get a ton of bites, but it does get big bites. There's no doubt. One thing you didn't see today too is I caught like a couple five pounders off of a, a pile, like towards the end of the video, and the pile still looked really good. Like there was a bunch of brim. I saw some bass kind of mixed in with the 
the brim. I picked up a drop shot, just a, a classic, you know, robo worm, weedless kind of deal. I think a 3 8 ounce West Coast tungsten, or West Coast, not tungsten. I would never put tungsten on a drop shot. West Coast weights or something. I'll put links to it down in the description box. But I picked that thing up and basically made a cast to those same areas, those same brush piles, and just shook that thing inside the brush pile. I lost a giant, dude. Now granted, I'm using like a ninny rod. This is a 7.3 medium, I think. But I was bowed up, dude. And the joker come off. It didn't even break me off. It came off, which is disappointing. But have like a backup bait, whether it's the Ned. Um, I got myself a little Ned down there. I got a shaky head. I got a drop shot. Have yourself just something small that you can follow up afterwards. We caught them on the big jig. I prefer to catch them on the big jig or maybe with a big Texas rig worm or something. But follow up with something smaller, a little more compact. And you'll be amazed too, because if you're on the right pile, this is Al Lindler. You know, 10% of the fish are in, or 90% of the fish are in 10% of the water. So if you find a good rush pile, and, and you're catching some bigs, there's gonna be more bigs and you can catch them on little ninny dinky stuff. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As you can see, it is raining. And that is why we're wrapping up because raining and my camera do not get along. I might stay out and scan a little more. If I catch a big one, I'll put it up on Instagram. So go check me out there. But thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit that like and I'm melting because of the rain and I can't talk. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you guys for all the support in the videos. I, I really enjoy doing this and the channel has really grown from a grassroots level. It's not because anybody big time got behind the channel or anything like that. It's because you guys, anglers that go out every weekend, guys that fish from the bank, guys that fish from a John boat, guys that fish from a $70,000 Ranger. Everybody kind of watches the videos, throws some comments down, interacts, and you guys are super cool about it can't thank you enough but we are out i'm gonna try to get out of this rain for a minute and uh, see if it passes but thank you guys for watching see you next time